Hey, it's the old coot coming back at you with another exciting video. Today I'm going to be making pesto. This is a follow-up video to the grating of the cheese video. I've reserved about like a quarter cup or so of that ground or grated Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. You could use any cheese you want. You could use Pecorino, you could use just straight Parmesan, whatever floats your boat. I had Parmigiano Reggiano, that's what was on sale at, at Trader Joe's, that's what I bought, that's what I used. What you're also going to need is a good measuring spoon, kind of a set kind of a thing, tablespoon, teaspoon, half teaspoon, quarter teaspoon, you get the idea. I've got a little, I'd say a bunch, maybe a flat leaf parsley, this kind of gives a nice grassy woodsiness and a bright kind of freshness to the pesto. Then I've got obviously basil, wherever you buy your basil or you grow it yourself or whatever, whatever floats your boat. Just make sure that it's fresh. Today is, I think, what was today? The November the 1st, day after Halloween. Wow. So this one expires uh, November the 8th. So you've got a little bit of room here and leeway. But I try to buy it and then use it right away, like the same day, if not the next day. But basically, that's your ingredients. So you've got basil, parsley, some cracked back black pepper that we're going to put in there, some good quality olive oil. You're going to need some pine nuts. Pine nuts are expensive. If you don't want to use pine nuts, you can use walnuts. I think kind of have the most, the next closest thing. If you're allergic to walnuts or any kind of nuts or whatever, just leave them out. No big deal. They do give a nuttiness to your pesto. So that's why I use them. Like I said, if you're allergic, just don't use them. But if you cannot find pine nuts that are affordable, you're only going to need about a tablespoon of them. So just keep that in mind, which is probably less than, I don't know, whatever whatever comes out to four or five dollars maybe somewhere around there but if you cannot find or you don't want to use the pine nuts because they're too expensive try walnuts if walnuts are don't are not floating your boat or whatever you could use almonds you could use filberts or hazelnuts you just want some kind of a nutty flavor cashews i've used cashews before which kind of bring on their own unique flavor to the dish or to the pesto sauce but anyways you get the idea by the way Now's a good time to hit that like button. Also hit the subscribe button down there below and also the notification bell. If I ground cheese and now I'm making pesto, what could the next video possibly be? Ding, 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 ding. That's right. We're going to be making fresh pasta in the next video. So that's why you want to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, hit that thumbs up if you like to see for all that good stuff coming up. Okay, salt. You could use sea salt. You could use pink Himalayan salt, which is what this is. You could use table salt if you wanted to, iodize, whatever floats your boat, Celtic sea salt. I use Himalayan pink. I think it just tastes good. It's got the minerals, all that good stuff. And then some red chili, some red chili flakes. These are optional. I usually put about a quarter teaspoon in, but this is just totally optional. This kind of gives it a different kind of heat than the black pepper does. So just keep that in mind. But if you don't want to use pepper, you're allergic, whatever, you sneeze too much, you know, whatever floats your boat. Anyways, to this cheese, since I've already got this thing cheesed up with that cheesy flavor, to this cheese, what I want to do is I want to add my garlic. Now, I've got five cloves here, five decent-sized cloves of garlic. You can use however much you want. This is going to give you a bright kick, like a nice brightness and kick and sassiness to your mouth when you're eating your pesto and obviously it's got that raw garlic kind of hit to it if this isn't your thing just use three cloves or use two cloves or use one clove whatever you want to use it's up to you what i've got here is a 12 inch chef knife this is from victorinox i will put a link down below in the description as well as a link to the food processor that i use this one's great this is a cuisinart 14 cup but the way i peel my garlic is pretty simple just one clove at a time i put my blade down and Boom, just give it a give it a smack and that cracks it open basically. And then from here now, it's pretty easy to take it out. What I am going to do is kind of process all five of these and then go ahead and chop them up a little before I put them in the food processor to make things a little bit more smoother. So like I said, just use your knife, the flat side of your knife, use the heel of your palm and just boom, just give it a good hit. That kind of cracks it or, or slightly crushes it a little so that it's easier to peel. And then basically there you go. So I'm going to do the other three. Let's see. And I can do these all at the same time. Make the process a little bit faster. And there we go. Beautiful weather we've been having here in Southern California. I think today was like 86 degrees in Los Angeles. Un unheard of in November. I mean, I remember one November got up to like 90 something. But that was like decades ago. Uh, anyways. 
Let's see, let's get this last peel here. How's the weather like in your neck of the woods? Go ahead and comment down below. Let me know when you're watching this video, month and time and all that good stuff. And if you're freezing your butt off in the Midwest or the North or you're uh, warm and toasty up in, uh, you know, Arizona, New Mexico, whatever. Make sure you don't have any ends here. Sometimes you get like these little hard ends, but uh, I think I did a good job so far. So what I want to do is just give them kind of like just a little rough chop. And I'm curling my, my finger so I don't cut them off. Quick little tip there. And I'm dancing with the flat leaf parsley. <laughs> but anyways, I just gave them like a good little rough chop. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer these over to my food processor. Cuisinart 14 cup. There you go. So that's going to go in. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my salt in. I like about a teaspoon of salt or so. Kind of does the trick for me. So there's one teaspoon. And just try to get all the lumps out. But basically one teaspoon of salt usually does it for me. And this final product yields about, I'd say about two cups of pesto. Like a cup and a half to two cups of pesto. So I'm not afraid to use the salt. Plus sometimes I can adjust the pasta water as I'm cooking the pasta to kind of be salty or less salty, depending on what I know the sauce I'm going to be using with it. Quarter teaspoon of the red pepper flake, because I do like mine a little spicy. And it's not heaping or anything, it's just kind of in there. That goes in. Then I've got some uh, spins of the black pepper, right cracked black pepper, cracked black pepper. Uh, that should be good. This probably came out to about, I'd say about a quarter teaspoon of pepper or so. And then the pine nuts, what I want to do is I want to use a full tablespoon of these. Look at how gorgeous these pine nuts are. These came from Trader Joe's. So about a, about a full tablespoon of those in there. That's going to give our pesto a little nice nuttiness. So now here's the trick. The trick is I'm gonna, I just want to grind this first, like the dry, quote unquote, the dry ingredients first, just to kind of give them a little uh, spin in the food processor before I start adding the oil and the pesto and the, and the basil and everything, you know, the basil and the parsley and everything else. So I just want to give it like a quick spin to try to create like a, a dry paste kind of a vibe. So I'm turning this on. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, as you can see right here, there's pulse and there's on. I just want to give it a quick pulse and then turn it on for a second. there we go so as you can see I've gotten this kind of um, dry paste action going on Make some room here I can move the salt out of the way since we're done with that and I can move the pepper out of the way since we're done with that okay so as you can see in here what I've got is using my handy dandy spatula what I've got here is a nice little like cheesy uh, paste, which a lot of a lot of times you can even put this on pasta, like cacio e pepo, kind of a variation on that. But I've just got it down to where now it's going to blend in a lot easier with the basil and the parsley and everything else. So let's get back over to our recipe on this side. Doing some handy dandy camera tricks. Okay, flat leaf parsley. Do you use the stems? Do you not use the stems? I find that if I use the stems, I get a nice grassy, woodsy kind of a flavor to them. If you don't want to use all the stems, you can just do one of these, right? And get rid of the harder fiber stems, which I think I might actually do. But once you get your flat leaf parsley down, I'd say this is a bunch and I just kind of smush it all together. And if you get a stem or two in there, it's no big deal. Just go ahead and give it like a rough chop so that as it goes into the blender, it's going to just help to blend a little bit smoother. And as you can see here, after chopping this, I would say this is about like somewhere in the vicinity of like a half a cup loose or about a quarter cup if you really packed it and smushed it down to size. But this goes into the pool. Let's have a little funny, uh, have a little fun with this party. So that goes in there. This goes in here. Got some rem remnant garlic in there. Now it's time for the basil. So depending on your basil, whether you get like these big leaf basils like this or whether you get the smaller ones, you will have to cut the stems. Unfortunately, the stems are really tough. So I leave these out. What I'll do with these is, is I'll make basil water, right? So put these in some water, put these in the fridge or put that water in a pitcher in the fridge. And what you can do is make basil water. It comes out delicious. You can just drink that as like a cool, refreshing drink. 
you know, on a hot summer day or even on a spring day or whatever. You can also throw these stems into like some tomato sauce. Like say, let's say I was going to make tomato sauce today and I had just finished my sauce. You can throw these in there, you know, and then get that kind of uh, basil essence without actually having to use the leaves or whatever. So in terms of basil, this is all about chopping and going as we go. There's a little schmutzy part. I'm going to leave that out. But it's the same kind of concept. You just want to roll and chop and just give it a nice, you know, just a little chop through. So that's, let's say, let's say that's about an eighth of a cup packed or about a quarter cup loose. We have a lot more to go. <laughs> that's the beauty of doing pesto is you want to try to fill up your food processor almost to the top because as you blend and grind it, it's all going to shrink back down into this beautiful liquid. But I like to do just like a little bunch at a time. So like, it's almost like rolling a cigar if you've ever done that before. Just kind of just a rough little chop. Right, I'm going through. I promise you I will stabilize this camera at some day, at some point, someday in the, in the near future, maybe. I don't know, we'll see what happens. But yeah, like I said, I'm leaving the stems off and just using the leaves themselves. And let's see if I can do this without, without too much camera shake. So there we go. So the goal is you're just trying to you're just trying to get like a nice little rough chop. And it's okay if some pieces are bigger than the others, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. In terms of fillage, we're not even halfway there. But you do want to kind of fill up your food processor as about as much as it'll go. I'd say maybe when it's all said and done, I'd say about two cups of packed basil leaves should go in there and obviously I've got enough here I mean, this is like king size version I've got enough here for about two or three times of making this so if I use some like let's say tonight and tomorrow for lunch give some to my you know closest people that I know and all that good stuff you know you could probably make about three or four batches but yeah what I'm trying to break apart here is I'm just trying to pull the leaf and obviously this is a massive piece of basil what I'm trying to do is just pull off the leaf and then this is the part that kind of gets woodsy like a little too tough for the food processor to handle. So this is what I'll leave out and basically just try to get, you know, more of the leaves in there. Like most standard size basil is about this size compared to, oh, this is the old coot size version. <laughs> Anyways, you get the idea. But wherever you can find basil, farmer's market, you know, whatever floats your boat, um, you get the idea. But I'm, I'm leaving this woodsy part out and I've got most of my leaves here. So here's about another like quarter cup loose, eighth of a cup packed. Just giving this a nice rough chop. So that's going to go in there as well. And then maybe I can probably go one more. Maybe one more. So here's how you know. Here's how you know how much basil to throw in there. Right? Because, you know, everything varies. Like a little bit more of this, a little bit less of that. You know, it's not an exact science. But... When, you've, when you think you've reached about the top, because you never want to go above this. You never want to go above this spindle right here. You just want to kind of go to the top of it, right? Because if your final liquid was higher than this, you'd overflow and it would all spill back down into there, which you don't want. So what you do want is you want to kind of try to make sure that... Ah, let's figure this now. Uh, we're back on. Click, I hope. Let's see. Click. Okay. You just want to make sure that like... When you when you put your basil in here, you're just at about the top. You're just at about the top of this when you throw your basil in there. Because like I said, if you go higher than that, then your final product's going to be higher than that, and it's going to overflow and spill all over the place. So we might go one more round. Let's see. I lost count. <laughs> if you re if you remember, comment below in the comment section. But I think I can probably get away with maybe two more of these. And like I said, I just I just want the leaves. I don't want the stems. I'm trying to use as much of this good stuff as I can. Okay, that, that looks about right. So I'd say, I think we used about six, like six half cups. So it's about a cup and a half of basil leaves that are just kind of coarsely, loosely, loosely chopped right here. So this is going to go in. Okay, there we go. Okay, to get this started, right, I'm not going to use olive oil. That's what most people would think, right? Throw in the olive oil and you're good to go. To get this started, what I want to do is I want to put some water in here. And it's about like two tablespoons or so of water just to kind of get it started and moving. And then I'll add the olive oil to that. So just over in the sink, 
right? What, there's one tablespoon. Here's another tablespoon. Whoops, a little bit too much there. Uh, but anyways, you get the idea. About two tablespoons, get that in there. So now what I want to do is put my lid on. And, okay, I'm going to switch over to one-hand mode so you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so what, I've, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part out, right, which is the... Um, the feeder, whatever it's called, so that we can pour the olive oil in. But what I do want to do is I want to pulse first, right, for just a little bit, just to get it started. Okay, and as you can see, we've already got like a good blend going, right? If I take the lid off, this is where I would start adding the olive oil, but if I take the lid off and you look in there, you can see it's almost like a chutney kind of consistency, right? It's like loosely chopped. It's like a the this aroma and the smell right now i wish there was smell vision but the aroma and the smell right now is just amazing but it's just this like not a paste almost kind of it's like you know it's like this little uh woodsy kind of like thing i don't even know what to call it right this is my non-technical non-professional opinion here but you can see it kind of looks like this what I want to do now is I do want to add the olive oil or start adding the olive oil just to kind of tighten it up. Total amount of olive oil that we're going to add to this is somewhere in the vicinity of around a quarter of a cup. As it comes out and down the stream, right, as I'm spinning this around, it'll look like a lot more. But total would be somewhere in the neighborhood of around like a quarter of a cup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my food processor on and then start adding the oil. Okay, and this is very important. See how... Okay, so this is very important. This is when you want to stop and scrape down your sides. But if, if you noticed, I know it, was kind of, it might have been kind of hard to see in the video, but if you noticed, there was a little ball that was kind of circling around inside of the food processor. That's how you know it's time to like scrape down the sides and then give it one more good blend. I may not need any more additional olive oil. We'll see. But basically what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to like scrape down the sides with my handy dandy silicone spatula. I will put a link to the spatula down below in the description. So make sure to check that out. When you get to the edges right here where the blade is, obviously try to be careful because you don't want to cut your silicone spatula into the blade. You get the idea. I'm basically just pushing it down a little bit so that it's all in there. Might do one of these. Give it a good toss. Lid goes back on. Oh, the smell is just incredible. I'm gonna turn my I'm gonna turn my food processor back on again. See that little ball that's rolling around in there? That's when so that little ball that was rolling around in there, that's when it's time to add just a touch, just a touch more olive oil to the mix as it's splitting. You as the blade spins, you want to add just a little more olive oil. So let's go ahead and do that. There's my elbow going in. And I would say we're about there. If you want a really fine pesto, you can continue to scrape. And boy, if you do want a really fine pesto, you can continue to scrape this down, right? And reblend it again. But for me, this looks heavenly <laughs> this looks heavenly so this is going to go on some beautiful pasta which i'm about to make in the next series of videos so that's why you want to stay tuned anyways hit that like button hit that subscribe button wherever that is down there below check out the description section for links to the food processor right the cuisinart 14 cup food processor i will put a link to the spatula i'll put a link to the kitchen knife and some other utensils that i've been using I'm getting some new cutting boards in, so we're going to do some future videos on those. And stay tuned. There's a lot more content to come. Anyways, the old coot here asking you all to hit that like button, subscribe, and I will catch you all in the next exciting video.